American History of Slavery by C. Edward Mack. In 1607, 104 Englishmen and boys arrived in North America to start a settlement. On May 13, they picked the area which became Jamestown, Virginia. They named it after their king, James I. Jamestown became the first permanent English settlement in North America. Their first and only slaves over the next 12 years were white people from Britain. Approximately 300,000 white slaves called indentured servants immigrated to the colonies in the 1600s. Ireland quickly became the biggest source of human livestock for English merchants. The majority of the early slaves to the New World were actually white. From 1641 to 1652, over a half million Irish were killed by the English, and another 300,000 were sold as slaves. In August of 1619, the first Africans in Virginia were approximately 20 captured slaves stolen from Angola. They were pirated and plundered from the slave ship San Juan Batista by Captain Jope, an English privateer operating under a Dutch flag. These Africans were sold to the governor of Virginia for food. They were taken through the Middle Passage from Luanda in Angola. They were likely Kimbundu-speaking people from the Kingdom of Ndongo. Of the 350 total taken from Angola, about 143 died in voyage, and 24 children were sold at the colony of Santiago in Jamaica, with 123 taken to Veracruz in Mexico, then called New Spain. Captain Jope, on his ship the White Lion, attacked the San Juan Batista and took about 20 captured Africans to Old Point Comfort on Hampton Roads on the Virginia Peninsula to be taken to Jamestown. The next year, in 1620, the Pilgrims aboard the Mayflower landed on Plymouth Rock. In 1662, Virginia enacts a law of hereditary slavery, meaning that a child born to an enslaved mother inherits her slave status. In 1663, 56 years since the start of the colonies, white slaves called indentured servants plotted an insurrection against their masters to occur on September 13, 1663. It was called the Servant's Plot. Indentured servitude was a form of labor where an individual is under contract to work without a salary for up to seven years to repay a loan or indenture, such as for the price of passage on a ship to America. These white slaves were only given food and shelter by their masters. Many of these white slaves did not live to pay off their contracts because they died from diseases or work-related incidents, or fled before completing their term of service. They enjoyed little personal freedom, and some contracts allowed the master to extend the work period for servants who were accused of behavior that was deemed improper. Later, the indentured slave system would also be used to exploit Asian slaves called coolies, who were mainly used to construct roads, and railway systems. Over half of all the European immigrants to the American colonies between the 1630s and the American Revolution were white slaves called indentured servants. Many young children were kidnapped off the streets of England and sent off as merchandise to be sold as servant slaves in the New World. Both slaves and indentured servants could be sold, loaned, or inherited. 
Some masters considered their indentured servants as personal property and made these slaves work difficult jobs. Others treated their black slaves more humanely than their white slaves because the black ones were regarded as a lifetime investment and the white ones would leave within a few years. Masters retained the right to prohibit their white servants from marrying and had the right to sell them at any time. These white slaves were often uneducated and could easily be cheated. The servants' plot also included black slaves. Nine indentured servants planned the rebellion. The plan was for everyone to steal or scavenge weapons to arm a company of 30 men. They would march to the home of the lieutenant governor to seize more arms and a drum. It was prevented when a white slave named John Breckenhead informed the authorities of the planned uprising. He was granted his freedom and 5,000 pounds of tobacco. The captured servants were hanged. Six years after the servants' plot, in 1669, the House of Burgesses admitted its laws had been ineffectual because so many slaves and servants ran away from their masters. The House of Burgesses was an assembly of elected representatives from Virginia. In the future, this assembly would become the training ground for George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Richard Henry Lee, George Mason, and Patrick Henry. In the 1670s in Virginia, the ratio of white slaves or servants to black slaves was four whites to one black, and there were free blacks who lived there as well. In 1676, an armed rebellion was held by Virginian settlers led by Nathaniel Bacon against colonial governor William Berkeley. After Berkeley refused Bacon's request to drive Native Americans out of Virginia, it increased white Virginians' hostility toward non-whites. This early form of racism led white Englishmen to think of dark-skinned people as inferior. Other historians point out that the move to black slavery only occurred when the flow of white slaves from England fell dramatically around 1680. In 1687, a group of black slaves conspired to kill whites and destroy property in Westmoreland County, Virginia. Nicholas Spencer, a member of the Governor's Council, informed Virginia's governor of a suspected slave conspiracy. They were captured before any part was executed. Although the outcome of the trial has been lost to history, it is assumed that the rebels were found guilty and executed. By the 1690s, the ratio reversed and changed to four times as many black slaves to white in under a hundred years. This was because the transatlantic slave trade was organized by wealthy Europeans as a system to provide forced labor to meet their needs. It was a dark, sad period of history that stained every individual and every nation involved in the Middle Passage. For most of the 1600s, white slaves worked the colony's tobacco fields, but by 1705, the Virginia colony had become a slave society. Nearly all power was in the hands of the white male landowners. They ran the General Assembly and passed an act concerning servants and slaves known as the Slave Codes of 1705. In 1723, the assembly went further and denied free blacks the right to vote. 1732, George Washington is born. In 1734, 
Virginia's economy continued to be dominated by a handful of elite families, most of whom lived on isolated rural plantation. The gentry, as they were called, were a small class of men who dominated economic, social, and political life. They were not of noble lineage. They were just rich. In 1743, Thomas Jefferson is born. The Boston Massacre was a deadly riot that occurred on March 5, 1770, on King Street in Boston. It began as a street brawl between American colonists and a lone British soldier, but quickly escalated to a chaotic, bloody slaughter. The conflict energized anti-British sentiment and paved the way for the American Revolution. Once the first shot rang out, other soldiers opened fire, killing five colonists, including Crispus Attucks, a local dock worker who was also a black man. In 1770, 91% of Virginia's slaves were born in the colonies of America. One of those slaves was a little girl named Celia Coleman. Another was a little slave girl named Sally Hemings, who was born three years later in 1773. She would become, in reality, the first black first lady of the United States. Only five years after the birth of the little slave girl named Celia Coleman, during 1775 to 1783, the American Revolutionary War was fought, with emphasis on the rights of the common man. The theme of every man is created equal under the law with unalienable rights caused many of the drafted non-gentry, poorer Minutemen to resent the planter's ability to avoid the fighting. It also inspired the slaves and abolitionists with thoughts of freedom. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, Patrick Henry, and others become our nation's founding fathers. In Massachusetts, on the night of April 18, 1775, hundreds of British troops marched from Boston to nearby Concord in order to seize arms stored there. On the way to Concord, Prince Estabrook, a black man, was present and fighting as a Minuteman at Lexington during the shot heard around the world that started the American Revolutionary War. Peter Salem, another black man, was a fighting Minuteman at Concord. At the Battle of Bunker Hill on June 17, 1775, Salem Poor, another black man, fought as a Minuteman. On July 4, 1776, there was a unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America to declare independence from England. It said, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Slaves and abolitionists believe these words apply to black people as well. This was the establishment of the United States of America, and the Commonwealth of Virginia. Slaveholders asserted that their slaves were loyal. However, they also lived in constant fear of revolt, so they prohibited the slaves from learning to read, restricted their movement, prevented them from meeting in groups, and publicly punished those who attempted to escape. The slave codes also punished white Virginians who assisted black people in violating the codes. In 
denied their unalienable rights of liberty and pursuit of happiness, the slaves were trapped in a cruel and unacceptable lifestyle. In 1782, the General Assembly allowed slaveholders to free their slaves from the injustice and criminality of slavery. Some did. In 1785, West Ford is born. He is the son of George Washington and Venus, the slave of his brother. In 1788, the U.S. Constitution is ratified. By the next year, the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution is ratified, granting a personal bill of rights to U.S. citizens among them freedom of speech, religion, and press. 1797, Sojourner Truth is born. In 1799, a petition to end the horrible Atlantic slave trade was signed by 74 black men and submitted to the President and Congress. 1800, John Brown is born. Also in 1800, the literate slave Gabriel, who was also a blacksmith in Richmond, planned a rebellion, but two slaves betrayed the plot. 1803. The Louisiana Purchase of 1803 brought into the United States about 828 square miles of territory. It was purchased from France thereby doubling the size of the young republic. What was known at the time as the Louisiana Territory stretched from the Mississippi River in the east to the Rocky Mountains in the west, and from the Gulf of Mexico in the south to the Canadian border in the north. Part or all of 15 states were eventually created from the land deal, which is considered one of the most important achievements of Thomas Jefferson's presidency. In 1808, 25 years after independence and nine years after the petition signed by 74 black men, the U.S. Congress abolished the international slave trade. This was when the slave trade was Virginia's largest industry. In 1809, Abraham Lincoln is born. Between 1810 to 1816, the growing number of free blacks in Virginia was more than 30,000, and they challenged the assumption that black skin equaled enslavement. Slaveholders feared that free black people presented a dangerous example of inspiring freedom to their slaves. The War of 1812 was a conflict fought between the United States and Great Britain. During that time, the White House and the U.S. Capitol were burned. 1812, also Martin Delaney is born. He was a free-born African-American abolitionist and the first black field officer in the U.S. Army during the Civil War. In 1810, when the little slave girl Cecilia was 40, she gave birth to a son in Virginia that she named Joseph who would marry Nancy and have a baby called Joe Jr. 1818, Frederick Douglass is born. The Missouri Compromise of 1820 was a law that tried to address growing sectional tensions over the issue of slavery. In 1820, also Harriet Tugman is born. In 1831, Nat Turner, an enslaved preacher, led the bloodiest slave revolt in U.S. history, killing 58 people. From that point on, most white Virginians approved of the practice of slavery, denied its evils, and defended it as a positive good. It prompted Virginia's General Assembly to debate the fate of slavery in the 1831-1832 to 1832 session. 
legislators considered proposals for abolition, but decided to maintain slavery. They also passed new restrictions on blacks, free and slave, making it illegal to teach black people to read. This was the last time a government of a slave state considered ending slavery until the Civil War. Prince Bayard was a slave, born in 1835 in Georgia. He married Mariah, born in 1841 in Savannah, Georgia. They had a daughter they named Lizzie in Georgia. Prince and Mariah were the property of Nicholas James Bayard, who was born in New York, New York, but moved to Savannah, Georgia. Nellie Bryan, a slave born in 1840 in Virginia, had a son she named Thomas Barringer in Georgia. Joseph Mack was a slave born in 1836 in South Carolina. He married Priscilla, born in 1844 in South Carolina, and they had a son they named John. In 1840, Sergeant Major Christian Fleetwood was born. He was a free-born black man who fought in the Civil War. In 1845, Texas joins the United States. Celia Coleman, the little slave girl born in Virginia, and her grandson Joe Jr. moved from Virginia to Georgia. Joe Jr., who was born in 1848 or 1850, marries Martha, and they have a daughter they name Lula in Georgia. The Compromise of 1850 was a series of laws passed by the U.S. Congress in 1850. The Compromise was created when new land was added to the United States after the Mexican War. The Northern Free States and the Southern Slave States argued over whether the new land would allow slavery or not. In 1855, Bleeding Kansas describes the period of repeated outbreaks of violent guerrilla warfare between pro-slavery and anti-slavery forces following the creation of the new territory of Kansas in 1854. In all, some 55 people were killed between 1855 and 1859. The struggle intensified the ongoing debate over the future of slavery in the United States and served as a key precursor to the Civil War. 1856, Booker T. Washington is born. In 1856, Wilberforce College for Black Students is opened for classes. Many students were from the South and were the natural mixed-race sons and daughters of wealthy slave-holding white planters and their slave mistresses. It was open on the site of the Tawawa Resort in Zena, Ohio, where the slaveholders had vacation with their slave mistresses and children. Wilberforce College also supported freedom-seeking slaves. Many houses in Zena were used as stations for the Underground Railroad. The slave Matthew or Madison Williams, born in 1855 from Florida, married Lizzie Green, born in 1864 from Georgia, and they had a daughter that they named after Lizzie's mother, Mariah. Thomas Barringer, son of the slave Nellie Bryan, and Tilly got married and had a son they named Joseph in Columbus, Georgia. In 1857, the Dred Scott decision was the U.S. Supreme Court's ruling that having lived in a free state and a territory did not entitle an enslaved person to his freedom. In essence, the decision argued that, as someone's property, Dred Scott was not a citizen of the United States and could not sue in federal court. <laughs> 
1859, John Brown's Raid. John Brown, 18 whites, and five blacks seized the arsenal at Harper's Ferry, Virginia, now West Virginia, in an attempt to take rifles to escape to the mountains to start a slave revolt. It failed, but the Civil War started just two years later. In 1860, 550,000 slaves, a half million, were living in Virginia, and they were one-third of the population. In 1861, George Washington Carver is born into slavery and went on to become one of the most prominent scientists and inventors of his time, as well as a teacher at the Tuskegee Institute. Carver devised over 100 products using one major crop, the peanut, including dyes, plastics, and gasoline. In 1854, the Republican Party was formed, and Abraham Lincoln joined it in 1856. The Republican Party was founded by opponents of the Kansas-Nebraska Act. Republicans differed among themselves in regards to the major issues of the day. For instance, some opposed slavery's extension, but not its existence. Meanwhile, others supported complete abolition of slavery. In 1860, November of that year, Lincoln became the first Republican president. The Civil War in the United States began in 1861 after decades of simmering tensions between northern and southern states over slavery and how slavery affected states' rights and how slavery affected westward expansion. The election of Abraham Lincoln in 1860 caused seven southern states to succeed from the U.S. and form the Confederate States of America. Four more states joined them. The war between the states, as the Civil War was also known, ended in Confederate surrender in 1865. The conflict was the costliest and deadliest war ever fought on American soil with some 620,000 of 2.4 million soldiers killed, millions more injured, and much of the South left in ruin. Nick Biddle was the first black man in uniform to shed blood for the Union Army when he was hit by a brick when marching through Baltimore. In 1863, Private Gordon, a runaway slave, enlisted in the Union Army Pictures of his scarred back from being a slave become historical. 1868, W.E.B. Du Bois is born. Nero Blanding was born in South Carolina after slavery in 1870 and married Charlotte, who was born in South Carolina in 1874. They named their daughter Martina, a.k.a. Martha. George Hampton was born in 1875 in South Carolina and married Regina, who was born in 1890 in South Carolina. They had a daughter they named Geneva. William Rice was born in Ohio in 1872 and married Jesse, who was born in Georgia in 1890. They had a son they named Wilson Willie. In 1875, Mary McLeod Bethune is born. Irvin Brooks and Lula Coleman, who was born in 1893 in Georgia, had a daughter that they named Willie Lee. John Mack was born in 1880 in South Carolina and married Martha Blanding, who was born in 1897 in South Carolina. They named their son Herbert. There were 3,959 lynchings of black people in the South from the end of the Reconstruction Era in 1877 to 1950 during the Jim Crow Era. The Jim Crow laws were state and local laws introduced in the southern states of the United States in the late 19th 
and 20th centuries that enforce racial segregation. Jim Crow was a derogatory term used for African Americans. 1882, Franklin Roosevelt is born. 1884, Eleanor Roosevelt is born. 1898, in the Spanish-American War, the United States fought Spain. Joseph Berenger was born in 1886 in Columbus, Georgia, and married Mariah Williams, who was born in 1893 in Florida. They had a son they named George. Wilson Willie Rice was born in Georgia, Ohio, in 1910 and married Geneva Hampton, who was born in South Carolina in 1908. They had a little daughter they named Willie Geneva, Willie G for short. 1900 marks the turn of the century. World War I, also known as the Great War, began in 1914 after the assassination of the Archduke of Austria. His murder catapulted into a war across Europe that lasted until 1918. Even after slavery and Jim Crow, black men bravely fought for their home, the United States of America. Herbert Mack Sr. was born in 1908 in South Carolina. And on September 22, 1928, he married Willie Lee Brooks, who was born in 1915 in Georgia. They named their son Herbert Jr. George Barringer was born in 1915 in Florida. He and Willie Geneva Rice, who was born in 1922 in Florida, had a daughter they named Barbara Jean. George served in World War II. William Patrick Foster is born. He was known as the law and creator of modern HBCU band techniques. 1925, Malcolm X is born. 1929, Martin Luther King Jr. is born. And also is Anne Frank. World War II also called the Second World War, was a conflict that involved virtually every part of the world during the years 1939 to 1945. By the early part of 1939, the German dictator Adolf Hitler had become determined to invade and occupy Poland, take over the world, and kill all Jewish people and steal their property. Jewish people who had been slaves in Egypt suffered annihilation during the Holocaust. Even after slavery and Jim Crow, black men bravely fought for their home, the USA. George Berenger was one of those black men. Herbert Mack Jr. was born in Florida in 1936. He and Barbara Jean Rice Berenger who was born in 1939 in Florida, had a son they named Charles. The Vietnam War was between 1960 and 1975 for the United States. Herbert Mack Jr. served in the Air Force and had a tour of duty in Vietnam. Charles Edward Mack was born in 1954 in Florida. He served in the Air Force in Southeast Asia during the Vietnam War as his father did before him. He is what happened to that little slave girl named Celia Coleman, who was born in Virginia, five years before the Revolutionary War that was fought by George Washington and Thomas Jefferson. He is a chemical scientist and a lawyer. 1961, Barack Obama, the first black president of the United States, is born. 1964, Michelle Obama, the second black first lady of the United States, is born. 